Good morning. It's lovely to see you. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Mike uh, and I'm the rector here at Eam Church, which means uh, kind of, uh, I suppose I'm the boss, but nobody really thinks that. But it is lovely to see you. Um, today we're, beginning, we're going to think about um, the Easter story and the greatest rescue there's ever been how Jesus came from God and rescued us and and saved us. Oh, that sounds good, doesn't it? Um, for those of you who are regulars, you might well have got a, a goodie bag. Um, if you have, there's lots of things in there, um, and I'll tell you a bit more about it. If you haven't, then I'm really sorry, but tell us uh, by uh, messaging or, or emailing or phoning, and we will get you one for next time. Um, but stuff in there that you might need. Uh, first of all, this, a matchbox. I mean, it's not a matchbox because um, there are no matches in it. Uh, it's empty and you can't strike the matches, but it looks like a matchbox. It's made to look like a matchbox, but it's not very big, is it? The challenge this week is can you tell the story of Easter and fit all the objects in your matchbox? It's not very big. You'll have to think and how to do it. It's one family I know who's done it brilliantly and they're going to show you how. Here is a challenge for cafe chair. So for cafe chair, you will get a little matchbox and what you have to do is try and get the Easter story in the matchbox. So you get loads of things to do with Easter and put it in the matchbox. You can use things of car and things. You don't have to use what I've used. Um, and if I just take it out, this is the things that I've got to do with Easter. They're not to do with Easter. Oh yeah, silly me, I mm. forgot. Um, so they can go in prison. So these are also to do with Easter story. This is a cross because Jesus died on the cross. And this is a plate. Well, uh, well no, I'll come back to that later. Um, here is the tomb which he died in. So if you see the little black thing, at the entrance, and then the rock, which you cannot get in. And then there's um, some bread and wine. Some bread and wine for the Last Supper. And then we have... The palm leaves, palm leaves, palm Sunday. yes, palm Sunday, right, a nail, because they nailed Jesus to the cross, um, one more plate for one, I've forgotten what this one's for, I've forgotten what everything else is for. The bowl is for the washing of uh, disciples' feet, at the Last oh, yeah. Supper, the sponge is for the wine vinegar that Jesus was offered on the cross, and we have all this in the scriptures. So you can find this story in any of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And in fact, the whole story of Jesus is throughout the Bible. The whole story of Easter is referenced elsewhere as well. That was awesome, wasn't it? How did they fit everything into that small space? So there's a challenge. Can you this week do the same thing? Think about what you want to put in there so that you tell the story of that first Easter, that great rescue that Jesus did. Um, I wonder whether now um, you can get your goodie bag, mums and dads, because there are three clues that are going to help us tell the story. And whilst we sing this next song, which is a lovely song about that first Easter, then you might want to sneak off and hide them one clue uh, in each of three different rooms or three different places, as long as you can remember where you hid them. That's always the problem I have. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, as we think about that last week of your life on earth, and we think about your love for us, Help us not just to tell the story, 
but to tell the story so that it might touch our hearts. Amen. So we sing, let us kneel as, so look at the screen, sing the song, but there might be some clues hidden. Because um, maybe those clues, uh, clues, clues have been hidden. But before we do that, we are going to party.
Because everybody that first Easter got really excited because Jesus was coming into town. And there was going to be, when Jesus came, there was always parties, always kind of fun. There was always food. There was a fair few miracles quite often. Things happen when Jesus was around. So you might want to party. So we've got all sorts of options for your party. Brilliant. And whilst we party, somebody might want to go and find the first clue. All about the first, that party at the beginning of the Easter week. <laughs> You're going, have a look. Whoa. We've got a fair bit of party time here. And of course, at a party. Are you doing it? Are you doing it? Let's go wild. Pop those poppers, uh, blow those, whatever these are called, and eat your biscuit rings, iced rings, the ultimate party food. Mmm. Wow. One. Sing a song. Jesus is coming. Party time. Party time. When Jesus is around, it's party time. Don't stop partying because Jesus is here. Mmm. Right. No, I've been told it's very rude to talk when your mouth is full. So I'll wait. Have you found that first clue? You got it. Is it like that? A palm cross. If you feel it, you can feel it. It's made out of um, a palm. So it's kind of um, a, a leaf, uh, but it's made into a cross. Now many of you have had one of those, these at a school or a church or you've got one hung up somewhere and they've been really important and, and Christians have been having these uh, for ever since that first Easter. But what's it got to, how does it tell, help us tell the Easter story? Well that first Sunday of the week um, Jesus came into Jerusalem to have a party. Everybody was excited. People were uh, crowding the streets. Um, so Simon, my friend, went to investigate. Three. Fit for a king, they said. Transport fit for a king. You will know where to find it, they said. Well, obviously I will do my best, but Transport fit for a king. That's a tough assignment. Ah, oh, now that's a car. It's pretty nice, don't you think? That's obviously what they were thinking about. Uh, excuse me, can I have your car keys? It's just the king needs to borrow. Clear off, leave my car alone. It's not yours. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, this is very precious to me. How about here? Now that is a decent motor. This must be the one. It just shouts class, doesn't it? Uh, excuse me, the king, Jesus, he just wants to pop into town and he needs just the right mode of transport to get in there. Could I borrow your keys? What, 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 what on earth are you doing trying to steal my car? I'm gonna phone the police right now. Maybe I've got it wrong. Of course, 2,000 years ago, they didn't have cars. What I need is a majestic horse, a fine steed. Now, where on earth am I gonna find one of them? Oh, I know. Now that is a wonderful creature, surely a fitting mount for Jesus. The crowd will go mad when they see him on that. Sorry, that, that's not the right one. This is what the master wants. If it's for him, then of course he can have it. Now this is embarrassing. I mean a king riding on a donkey. <sighs> Come on, let's go. And remember, you are fit for a king. It was amazing. The crowds went wild. They pulled down branches from the trees and started waving them. And then they took off their coats and threw them down before Jesus, like a red carpet. Look, mine's still got the hoof marks. And that donkey looked at me. 
I swear it was almost smiling. Transport fit for a king. Well, they weren't expecting that. They thought a king was coming. But he came riding on a donkey. Still they partied. Still they were excited because Jesus was coming. And they tore down the branches and waved them at Jesus and said, Hosanna, Hosanna, great, you're here, you're the king. I wonder whether you want to take your cross. Have a feel of it. And remember those branches as they partied as they celebrated, as they got excited for Jesus, they held. That same Jesus who rode into Jerusalem can come into our hearts and our lives and we can celebrate and we can invite him in and he wants to party with us, to give us life and life in all its fullness. To be our friend, to rescue us. He doesn't really ask for very much. But in his gentle and humble way, riding on a donkey, but no less a king. He says, we'll you come and follow me. Make way for me. So have a moment of quiet and you look at your cross. Hold on to that. You might want to think about Jesus, when you hold on to that in uh, days to come. Right, come on detectives, can you now go and find your second clue? It's going to be in the next room. I hope you haven't forgotten where you put it, mums and dads. Go on. Who's going to go and have a look for it? Quick, quick. I'll have a little chat whilst you do it. Um, I'll see if I've got um, that here anyways somewhere. Found it. But I'm gonna have another party ring. You see, everybody thought with Jesus coming in, it was all gonna be all right. He was just gonna say, "I'm the king," and chase out all the baddies. Um, but there were people who didn't want that. There were people there who ganged up against Jesus and wanted to get rid of him. And Jesus had only come with love and healing and goodness and kindness. But they couldn't cope with that. And they wanted to get rid of him. So they plotted. And it started to get nasty and difficult. But Jesus was always in control. Have you found it? Does it look a bit like this a sponge no hold on got the wrong one there you go some uh, crackers now why why do we want crackers what's this got to do with Jesus well I wonder can you tell me why you'd have a cracker as you tell the story of Easter? Simon was there. He'll tell you. A meal, they said, fit for a king. Everywhere's busy. How do they think I'm going to find a place to prepare a banquet fit for a king? It's Passover. Everywhere's busy. Booked. Right, here looks like a good place. Pretty posh. Hmm. 
What do you mean you're full up and even kings will have to wait six months for a table? Well, thank you very much. <sighs> oh, I've just been told where Jesus wants it to be. There's a choir up a room. He just wants to be with his friends. Do you want to come and have a look? Ah, here's a place. Come and have a look. Well, it wasn't what I was expecting. I don't know if it was a banquet fit for a king. It was pretty simple. It was just Jesus with his friends. They talked and talked, and then Jesus took some bread from the table and tore it into two and gave God thanks. And then he told them that this was his body and that every time they ate together, they should do this in remembrance of him. Then he took the cup of wine and lifted it up, blessed it, and then started passing it to all of his friends. He said the strangest thing. He said it was his blood. Maybe one day I'll understand. Then it got weirder. He took a towel, then washed our feet. Now that is not fit for a king, but somehow when he washed my feet, I felt loved and made clean. And as he dried my feet, I thought, this is my type of king. Then they all got up and left singing. That last supper, Jesus' last meal before the terrible events after that whether you want to uh, take a cracker. Remember what Jesus did. He was with his friends. It was starting to go terribly wrong. That Everybody was ganging up on him. Uh, and it must have been really, really scary. He wanted to talk to his friends. So he had a meal with them. And then he took some bread. It was uh, not bread like we normally have. Um, it's kind of a bit like a cracker. And uh, he snapped it. And he said, this is my body. It's been broken for you. And he tried to give them a clue what was going to happen to his body to make this amazing rescue happen. And then he snapped it again. And he passed it around his friends. And he said, every time you, you eat it, remember that this is my body, broken for you. Remember what I did for you and give thanks. Don't know what the best thing anybody's ever done for you is. But I think that was better. That Jesus loved you so much that he was prepared to have his body broken. Why don't you pass it around everybody in your room and just eat a piece. And remember, Jesus died for you. And give thanks in your heart that you are loved. Now I gave a clue away for the third clue. I've already shown you. I should have, uh, no, I didn't do that very well, did I? So why don't you go and find the third clue, which looks very much like this. Okay, go for it. And whilst you're doing that, another party ring. Mm. That is good. 
sponge. Why on earth a sponge? What's that got to do with Easter? Well, I wonder what Simon's got to say. This is not right. This isn't how it should happen. They shouldn't do this to a king. And he is a king. It says here in black and white, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. A death fit for a king. He should be lying in state. He should have a wonderful coffin. There should be a gun salute and a day of mourning. People should be lining the streets. The flag should be at half mast. This wasn't a death fit for a king. Oh yeah, they gave him a crown, but it was a crown of thorns. The streets were lined only with people jeering. They beat him up and made him carry his own cross. They nailed him to a cross. Even his clothes, the soldiers rolled dice for. When he was thirsty, all they gave him was vinegar. He should have been the king for everyone, but they threw him onto a rubbish tip. But when he died, the centurion who had him killed saw this man really was the king. The king of love. The king of love. Jesus, who came and lived that amazing life of love in his dying moments when he'd been cruelly put upon a cross with nails hammered into his hands and his feet. He was thirsty and he cried out. And one of the things he cried out was, I'm thirsty, and they just put some vinegar, some wine vinegar, horrible tasting stuff, on a sponge, on a stick, and shoved it up towards him. This was the king. This was God's son, sent by God to show us the way to live, to show us how to love, to show us what a real human being is really like. And they killed him and they crushed his body. Why? Well, it wasn't an accident. It wasn't a mistake. God allowed it. God allowed terrible things happen so that we might be forgiven. You see, in a sense, we should be on the cross because we've done lots of wrong things. As a human race, we've messed up. But this was the great rescue plan. Who might you want might to take your sponge or even your cross? If you've never asked Jesus into your life, as we've heard again the amazing Easter story, you might want to. Dear Jesus, thank you that you came on Palm Sunday to your people as the King. Thank you that at the Last Supper you showed your friends what it really meant, that your body was going to be broken and your blood poured out to rescue us because of your love and though we're sad at the way you died we know that you came back to life again I'm sorry Lord that I've done wrong things I'd like to follow you Please, would you come into my life and help me start again? Amen.
if you've prayed a prayer like that or you would like Jesus to come into your life and to, for you to find forgiveness and a new start then then I'll message or, or tell you tell your parents um, or uh, tell your friends or whoever it is of what um, what Jesus has done for you let's tell the story again the matchbox now this is another version okay so we've got here our special matchbox with our Easter garden things can you want to show us what you've got inside Simeon what first let's see bring it out right what does this one what is that one and this one um the grape is for jesus turned water into wine jesus did turn water into wine didn't he and then that he had just before the easter story happened he had a special meal with his friends where they drank Skipper. wine and what else did they have and um, they had some bread bread too and, and jesus used that as a special way to remember um, him right what else have we got in there let's have a look i think we might have this one first what's that one uh, and that and that means jesus being nailed to us to a cross yeah jesus was nailed to a cross yes. which is really sad wasn't it what happened yes. let's have a look what's this one um, um that's the cross Jesus was nailed on to. That was a cross, yes, that's represent that. And then what did they do? They And what happened? Oh, what's this one? This one's a bit random, isn't it? What's this one? Who did we talk about? Jesus had some friends and and, and, and he thought and he and this is for Jesus and had the ball, 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 ball to play. <laughs> Friend. Well, Jesus liked to have spending time with friends, and yes. we thought a ball represented friendship, didn't we? Yeah. And um, but Jesus' friends yeah. got a bit scared, didn't yes. they? And some ran away, but some helped, and some came to see where he was afterwards. Yeah. yeah. What else have we got, Simeon? Uh, what? Next? It's a baby. The grass. Not a baby. No, let's some grass. Show us the grass. Um, and the grass is the grass is for. Jesus be, be in the tube in the garden. That what the grass is for. Baby Jesus was born at Christmas. Yeah, that's right, Lydia. And yes, the grass was Baby put in, in the stable. That's right, sweetheart. What next? Um, show us that that one, that stone. What's that one for? Um, he was in a tomb, and this stone is for that. Let me show, show me. There we go. Brilliant. And the last one, what have we got? What is this? <laughs> it's a, show everybody what it is. It's a little mini egg. Mm. And it's because there was new life. Jesus didn't stay in the tomb. What happened? He, he came out to the uh, tomb and had new life. Yay. So that's to represent new life. Fantastic. And that all fitted in our little matchbox. I wonder what you're going to put in your matchbox to tell the wondrous story of the great rescue. Ali's now going to come and lead us in our prayers before we finish. Good morning. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit of a prayer exercise around the idea of turning over a new leaf. Now, you might have noticed that it's almost springtime and that you were beginning to see new leaves growing and new life. Uh, we see the little buds on the branches and we see baby lambs arriving. And this is a time of hope and a time of change. And we call this time Lent as we prepare to celebrate Easter. And often Christians use it as a chance to reflect on their own lives and think, are there areas of my life, our lives, that maybe would be good to look at or to change? Is there something we would like God's help with um, to change how we are in that part of our life? And in your goodie bag, um, you'll find these little leaves and we're going to use these leaves to pray this morning. So I want you each to take a leaf. There's one for every family member. And I want you just to pause and to think, what is the area of my life that I would like to turn over a new leaf? 
where would I like to see change? And I want you to think, you know, and it could be anything. It could be family life. It could be how you are at home, how you are at work or at school. Or it could be an attitude to someone. Or it could be a, a little habit or a practice that you feel God is asking you to do. So for me, it might be um, my habit around Bible time. So I might like to change up the way I spend time with God and his word in the Bible and make it a bit of a focus um, in a different way. So I'm going to write Bible time on my leaf. And I want you now, just in the quiet, to take your leaf and in the silence to think, what is it that I want to turn over to God? Where do I want a fresh start? So let's just do that now together. So maybe you've managed to think of something to put on your leaf and let's let's take our leaves and let's take them and put them face down and maybe we can all put our leaves together and maybe you'll want to share your leaf with your family members so that they can pray with you and they can encourage you as you try to change that part of your life and remember that we don't change these things on our own that God has promised to work with us and to listen to us and he will help us um, help us move toward him in that part of our life and he will give us a fresh start and there's a lovely bible verse in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 it says therefore if anyone is in christ the new creation has come the old has gone and the new is here so let's take our leaves and put them face down and let's say a prayer now together. Father, thank you that you are with us and thank you as we walk the road to Easter, you walk it with us. And Father, thank you for the chance to pause and to notice which bits of our lives we would like to change and which areas we would like to give to you for your help for a new start. Father, would you help us turn over a new leaf in these areas? And at this point, you might like to actually turn your leaf over and give it to God. So God, I ask for a new start, a fresh leaf, a new beginning in this part of my life. And I trust that you will help me um, and be with me as we do that together. Father, thank you that you care about all these aspects of our life. And thank you that you want to bring us life and love and fullness of life. So we pray these prayers in the name of your son Jesus as we get ready to think about all he did for us at Easter. In his name, Amen. And remember that if you couldn't think of anything this morning, that's okay. You can keep a hold of the leaf and maybe even if you did write something, take your leaf and have it as a reminder about that uh, commitment to change up that bit of our life and to make it a bit of a focus and remember that we do all this uh, in God's strength and God's enabling we're never alone thank you Ali so that's the Easter story if you come back in a fortnight's time it'll be Easter day and we can tell the ending of the story or the next chapter which is wonderful and you kind of know it, don't you? But um, it's worth the wait. Love came down. Jesus, the great rescue, who rescued the whole world. And he rescued me. Wonderful. Let's sing about that. When love came down.
Well, thank you for worshipping with us uh, this morning. It's been great to have you. Um, I say to do come back um, in two weeks' time on Easter Day when we can celebrate. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, uh, especially if you wanted to do the Matchbox Challenge and uh, either take a photograph of it, a video of it and share it with us. That would be great. Or you just wanted to say we were here um, and get in contact in church uh, website, Facebook page or lots of different ways where you can uh, chat to us. So have a great day. God bless. And um, remember the story.